everybody. This is Heather with the Mirrors in Black, and I want to welcome you to our uh, inaugural uh, Artist Spotlight. Today, we are joined by the wonderful Nikki Button, uh, parentheses O'Neill, uh, <laughs> who we kindly refer to as Nikki B.O. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> we love Nikki. Uh, I'm also joined by my co-host, uh, Jackie Rossi. Um, and we are excited to talk to Nikki about her artistic journey and her process and what she's working on right now. Welcome, Nikki. Yay, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Yay. Yay. So how, how'd you find the hobby, Nikki? Well, first off, tell us uh, about yourself, okay, Nikki. Okay. Well, I am a stay-at-home mom and I work from home with my art. Um, I'm very lucky in that aspect. But I have been, I guess for my introduction into the hobby, I've been riding horses ever since I was really young. Um, so naturally my family gifted me a lot of briar horses and the Just About Horses magazine. And so that's really what like introduced me to like, oh, people, you know, repaint these and customize them. And, um, and I remember there was an article from Jen Danza in particular, and I think that's what made me, you know, buy pastels and buy acrylics and get started that way. Um, so yeah, if I really had to originate back to where I started, that's where hmm. I got inspiration to keep, or to try repainting my briars that I got as gifts. Sorry. <laughs> so from like, you got into the hobby, how long was the transition from, you know, just collecting to say, hey, I want to, I want to make my own art. I think I looked back at my model horse sales pages account and it says I joined in 2006. And this is mm -hmm. when I was in like middle school. So I was still, you know, real young. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I had been painting on the side, practicing um, just, you know, as a hobby for fun. And then fast forward to, I think around 2015 is when I, you know, quit my job and decided to go full time with my art. Um, and there's a lot in between there, but <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just, I always enjoyed painting. I always enjoyed the art side of it. Um, and of course, you know, I just love horses. I love the rainbow colors that they come in. Um, so it's just really fun to try. I mean, every time you paint something, you're trying a different color, trying something new, trying to get it as close as you can to your reference. Um, so I think it's just the challenge of doing that. It's just nice and relaxing. And that's what I always liked about it. It's just something to, you know, kind of zone out and enjoy yourself and work on something new. Yeah, so Namo Pamo just ended, right? And I did my my first horse, right? And I'm <clears throat> so I'm happy with it, right? But it's it's super rough, right? It's grainy. The whites aren't quite opaque. It's so uh, to, for, to advise other like people that are just starting or a little bit down the road. What, how how did you hang on? When did you know you could start selling? Like how was that journey from being just a noob noob, and and not being happy with your work or being okay with it, but knowing it wasn't ready for prime time? I think it's just you just have to keep practicing. Like you just have to paint more horses. Um, I mean, I don't have an exact pinpoint of when I, you know, I don't know, switched over and figured out that maybe I could do this professionally. It just, I think there's just a point where I started getting so many people asking me for commissions that I was like, okay, um, maybe I've got, you know, something here. To what, if, if, what if I did do this full time? You know, hey, I might be good at this. Would I be okay? <laughs> you know, um, but as far as up until that point, so when I started getting a lot of requests, it's just, I remember, like I was on Fallen Leaves Forum for a long time. Oh, wow. yeah, I remember Fallen yeah. Leaves. Yeah. Um, and Blab, of course, a little bit, not a whole lot, but I think it was just the camaraderie with everybody else. So you can talk to other people and share. I mean, it's the whole premise, I think, behind Namo Paymo. But right. for new people starting out, it's really, you can, I mean, ask questions and, um, figure out what other people's techniques are and see if you can't make it work for you. Um, but just practice. I think Melanie Miller, she said, you know, paint every day if you can. Mm -hmm. um, so that 
that stuck with me too. It's like, okay, you know, this is like 365 days a year almost that I try to get a little bit in every day. It's just practice and um, building up on your previous work in layers and eventually it starts to look like a horse. <laughs> Do you have any formal training? No. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> no. It was, um, so like I said, Jen Danza's article really got mm -hmm. me into pastels. Um, and then I, I don't know if she's around anymore, but Sarah Trege, she had a, a book. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I remember that name. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I know the book yeah. you're talking about too. I remember buying the book and I can't recall where I got it from, but um her book helped me out too a lot. Just learning, you know, how to prep and prime and dealing with pastels because they can be, sure, as, as you know, they can be great. Yes, yes. <laughs> I do know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just, you know, try different brands of things. I know some of the more expensive stuff can be, you know, hard to obtain for some people, but you can still, I think like Stephanie Blaylock still uses a lot of like craft paints and they still, they work great. I mean, she does. It's just I Hobby guess, Lobby brushes and craft paint. Yeah. yeah. If I still oil and I, as you know, Stephanie's work is just like, I don't know, it's <laughs> amazing. But um, I think it just boils down to it's a lot of layers, just keep layering. And I think Stephanie recently said to, um, you know, don't just dump your horse and strip it right away. You can really just backtrack. I guess that's why I like pastels. You can backtrack a little bit. It's hard to do, but um, if you have to fix a mistake, which is nice. That was one of the things I noticed. And I think I have a grain issue, but I think a lot of my grain issue is coming from the fact that the horse was primered with something that was overly textile. Do you know what I mean? Tactile yeah. and, and, and lumpy. Yeah. Um, but that's how, you know, I just powered through it. I was just like, I'm not stopping. Right. And I did notice that, yeah, once you seal it and go back, you can readjust stuff tonally with the pastels. Like you're not yeah. stuck. So. Right. Yeah. If you get like late into your layers, you want something to be cooler in tone or warmer in tone. It's really, you can just, you know, add a layer of, you know, the appropriate color and it'll help your horse adjusts to where you want it to be. But yeah, unless your primer is like super duper smooth and which I actually have like these little buffing blocks. Um, so do you primer them and sand your horses? Kind of buff them off? Yes, if it needs if it needs to. These are like the little nail like buffing yeah. blocks. Mm -hmm. So it's like super duper fine, um, which Kylie Parks got me onto these. Um, yeah, just any little bump or lump or anything, your pastel is going to stick to it. Yeah. yeah. Did, so you said Jen Danza, Sarah uh, Tregay inspired you to start painting. Who are your biggest influence now? Who are, I mean, I think I know, but for everybody listening, <laughs> who are your contemporaries? Who do you, who, who's the friendly competition? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know I'm going to forget somebody here because there's, I mean, there's so many amazing artists as, just this past month watching, unfortunately I wasn't able to participate this month, but through Namo Paymo and seeing like new names and new faces and it's like, holy cow, like there's so many amazing artists. So I'm gonna forget a lot of people I'm sure, but um, my good friends, Kylie, Amanda, Shane Langbauer, like she, that's another realm of like Melanie Miller and Shane and everybody that like paints with oils from start to finish. I'm right. Like, like there's, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it, but like it, that would be very difficult for me. Like, I guess I'm just so, I love my pastels and my acrylics. Um, so, I mean, hats off to them. It's just amazing to me what they can do with oils. Um, Jennifer Scott's another amazing oil painter. Um, I've always loved Mindy's work. She's um, just amazing with her colors and her use, use of color. Um, Is she pastel? Yeah, I think she uses pastels, maybe some oils, if I remember. Um, I love painting her sculptures. I mean, there's so many amazing things yeah. to do. Just, yeah. Jen Scott, let's see. I think I wrote some down here because I'm, I'm going to forget somebody. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan's paintwork is just timeless. I think. Morgan Kilborn. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and it'd be amazing to see her paint more, I think. 
she she's funny and sarah big the same way mm-hmm. you know some of the best painters in the biz they'd rather sculpt it's like yeah, oh, so why? i don't think morgan really <laughs> likes to paint which i'm like oh no, she doesn't yeah she doesn't i mean they're amazing sculptors so i, I would see you know that totally makes sense um as far as sculptors go like amelia raven uh, amelia so many, mm-hmm. so many people and oils too. Heather Bullock, holy cow. Hmm. That girl is so talented. I just want to cry. <laughs> I, I do flat work too. That's yeah, she does flat work. She does makeup. Like, what are you doing, Heather? <laughs> like Jen, Jennifer Scott too. She's, she's in ceramics and she can sculpt and she can paint. She can cast. She can do everything. <laughs> I I don't think she sleeps. I've told her that. No. Right. Because she quilts too. Have you ever seen her quilts? She made Wyatt a quilt. Yeah. Did she? That's amazing. Yes. I love it so much. Yeah, he's he was just snuggling on it the other day. I just <laughs> That's it, so cool. It's so gorgeous. Um I mean, I know I'm forgetting people. Well, we, we don't need a definitive list. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just looking for like who who keeps you on your toes. So yeah, I would say Jen Scott, um, Mindy, Melanie, Shane, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. Summer Crosser is also amazing. Airbrushing is. I know. Golly. Yeah. Airbrush just blows my mind. It, it's funny because I was thinking about that this morning. It just crossed my mind that, you know, in the hobby as a whole, airbrushing used to be the way, right? Oh, yeah. And it's really fallen out of favor. Um, and the only, I was trying to think of the, you know, the people that still use it that are still in the hobby. I mean, I saw Pam Hutton airbrush and it was a miracle. It can be done, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. and look good because a lot of people's complaints with airbrushes is flat, blah, blah, blah. It's a tool just like anything mm-hmm. else and you have mm-hmm. to master it. Summer Prosser stuff is so great. Yes, I love Summer's work. Um, can to think of who else. I mean, anytime, it, and really not just the artists that I've mentioned, but it's, that's why I like Namo Pamo, I still, you know, join i still want to see everybody's work because you scroll through and then something catches your eye and you're like wow so it's you know everybody uses different mediums and they they give different looks and everybody's got their own style which i think is really important yeah there were a ton of people that that i had never heard of that were turning into these monster horses for an ammo pay mode like, yeah. who are you do yeah. you take commission <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've seen so like the last like week i've seen so many like really nice horses and i you know with names i'm like really you can do that or you know or people i haven't heard of before or like exactly yeah. and then what you know and then that just pushes you to find them like you go look for them on instagram or something because you just want right. to see their work because it's just you know there's there's countless amazing art, artists in this hobby, mm. which is great. So can you talk a little bit about your process, Nikki? Like from starting a horse to finishing a horse, like you don't have to go into super, super detail, mm-hmm. but kind of talk about your workflow just a little. Um, so I think I posted a picture the yesterday or the day before. I will kind of prep in groups. Um, so yeah, prep, scrape, sand, and then wash them, and then um, primer. I like the Rust-Oleum Painters Touch Primer. I don't know, what primer did you try when you did yours? Oh, it was already primered. Hmm. So funny story. It, yeah. was, it was a horse from a clinic that I was, I took at Briar West with Jackie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was with Leslie Kathman on how to do pento markings. And as we know, Leslie likes to talk. And she talked so much, we never painted the horses. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we all got these primed. I think they're just gesso. I don't. Oh, they were. Yeah. They were. I don't know what they were, but yeah. it had a white coat on. I thought it was primered. If it was gesso, that's probably part of the problem. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, so it, it had already been done. So I was like, I don't even have to prep a horse. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. If it was gesso, that's probably what it was. Because I'm. If I remember right, maybe it doesn't yet. Yeah, it doesn't seem like rustoleum because I. I mean, she she turned out yeah. okay. She's she's she's, she's fine, but you know, 
just, I just think it's beginner problems. Like I, I think maybe I applied the pastel too heavy and it was, you know, the, the primer wasn't right. And, you know, I just need to, it's all refining stuff, yeah, right? I'm pretty sure there's, if I remember, I think Morgan said that there's a little bit of like marble dust or something in, that they put in gesso. Yeah, yeah. That, that would totally give it like too much. You don't want to, it's just finding that like happy medium of, you know, too much too versus not enough. So I've just been happy with the Rust-Oleum. If you get a matte primer, that usually gives you the right amount of tooth. Um, but it still keeps everything nice and smooth. And then um, I also have some color tinted primers that I've really been liking lately. And I'll show you some pieces later. But um, so sometimes I start with that. There's a real light beige one that I like that just helps, you know, kickstart. So I don't have to do, you know, two, three beigey layers in pastel. It just saves me a little bit of time. Um, and then I really, it's expensive, but the only one that I've really loved is Tester Still Coat. Mm, yeah. So I'll put that over my primer to get things started. And then it's just layers, 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 layers. Yep. <laughs> In the little <laughs> tiny cans. <laughs> In the little tiny cans. Yes. Yeah. I go through those uh. like crazy. I love this stuff. So you do those for every layer? You do oh, testers for every layer? I do, um, so an initial layer, let that dry. And then I'll do one, anywhere between one to three layers of pastel, depending on what colors I'm using or what type of pigment I'm using. And then I'll seal in between. So I do, yeah, I do seal. Yeah. Oh, the question I was asking, because Stephanie switches between Krylon and testers. She doesn't use mm -hmm. her, she does, and she does gloss coat every once in a while too. Yes. Yeah, hmm. I think that helps. Um, the gloss helps smooth things out your surface. Yeah. It's nice. Um, so far, I mean, the testers is smooth enough for me to keep going. But um, the pigments that I like, I like the earth pigments. Um, Pan pastels. I just recently got those maybe like six months ago. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Like I wish I would have bought them sooner. <laughs> um, and I still use a lot of the soft pastel sticks. I was going to ask, do you, do you use the sticks, the oil-based stuff? They're not, or? They're not oil-based. Um, the wax-based, like the, cho the chalky ones? The chalky ones, yep. the soft pastels. Um, Cause a lot of the times I'll, you know, still scrape those off and I make my own mixes. Um, and I mix a lot of Perlex into mine too, which just, you know, helps build like that kind of like healthy sheen as you go. Um, you know, Jen Scott made a comment on my work a couple years ago that said, you know, basically my horses look like I painted with oil paints, but they, you know, there's no oils on there. And I think the Perlex really helps you build that nice, healthy shine. <coughs> um, when somebody told me that you did pastels, this was a few years ago, I didn't believe them. I was like, there's no way those are pastels. Yeah, I didn't believe it and, and when I got Ilium and Luna, I just, look, I was looking. <laughs> there's not a single grain on here. How does she do it? <laughs> yeah. And that's the other trick is you like painstakingly slow, just build your colors. You can't go too dark, too fast. Um, otherwise, you're just going to see all the grain. And um, I'm trying to think if there's any other materials in here that I like. The, just the regular like angle brushes is what I apply it with. Um, and these are just kind of cheapo brushes that I found on, um, you know, from Blick Art Materials. Um, and then that's for the main body color. And then I move on to acrylics. Um, I really don't use a whole lot of acrylics on the actual body, of course. That's all for main tail, legs, eyes, details, that kind of thing. Um, and then every now and then I'll use some like metallic watercolors. Those are fun. Just different. Hmm. See a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I tried um, Stephanie's technique of doing acrylic washing. Yeah. And that was, that was pretty cool. That I kind of... I have not tried that, but I would really like to get some of the, um, is it the flow, flow medium or something like that? Yeah, I, she uses craft paint. I went ahead and got Joe Sonia and she, she yeah. has a flow medium, which is really great. Like, okay. 
Okay. Instead of thinning with water, I do that. So that is, speaking of, yeah, that's my acrylics. Okay. The Joe, the Joe Sanja is, I don't know. I started use it, I started using that for two reasons because um, I really am a fan of matte 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 paint jobs. I don't like paint jobs that have a mm -hmm. semi gloss to them for the most part. Um, and Lynn Fraley and Pam Hutton's were kind of back in the day the maddest paint jobs in the biz, and that's what they both used. And I was like, that's yeah. what I want to use. Mm. Oh, it has been around. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know much about the brand, but that's interesting. It's been around for that long. Oh yeah, like Pam, I think airbrushed with her Joe Sonia's. Oh wow. Yeah. She would squeeze them out then um, and put them in her airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be really interesting to watch, you know, summer work with her. Yeah. Airbrushes. Yeah, I'm not sure what she uses. Maybe golden? I'm not I'm I'm not hundred percent. We'll try and snag her for a show yeah. at some point. So <laughs> beat it So out how like how do you finish? You get your details on, you get your white swipe, you get your eyes done. Mm -hmm. What comes next? Then I just kind of fiddle back and forth to make sure, you know, my whites are all opaque. Um, do you have a trick for that? Because do you take it out in the bright blinding sunlight or do you show something? Like, how do you? I will. I found I found, I found a bunch of errors in my horse when I took pictures of it in the light box. And I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, if it's a commission horse, especially, you know, I usually will take progress pictures for, um, you know, their owners. And that really helps me see if there's something I need to fix or if maybe my whites aren't opaque enough. Um, so yeah, taking progress pictures is definitely helpful. And then in, I'm, I'd say about half, the, half of my time is spent in the garage anyway, sealing and priming and everything and just having a different light, just taking it back and forth will help me catch stuff. Prepping too, um, sometimes you're lighting will you know hide some things um so that's a good point yeah take it outside or um, take some pictures or even just a turn in your chair just to get a different light from your window or something mm -hmm. yes that's very helpful do you work with any light and like uh magnification stuffs do you have the glasses the Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're, still too you're still too young you're young for that <laughs> i'm sure well at some point <laughs> So I've got, a, I've got a good one when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> <You're good. laughs> but yeah, so, and then just at the end, it's a couple layers of um, matte sealer just to make sure you know, somebody wants to pack it up. I just want to make sure my paint's not going to come off or anything. And then I like the Liquitex um, gloss, gloss medium varnish. And that's what I do the eyes um, and the hooves too. I just kind of apply that thinner on the hooves just to give it you know, not, not so wet look, but it's a, it's a hard surface. So it's got right. a little bit of reflection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then pictures. <laughs> pictures. <Yay. laughs> yeah. So yeah. go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm good. Go ahead. So, you so, you know, you're, you know, you're one of the most popular artists in the hobby, right? And you know, it, 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 how do you feel about, how do you feel about being on everyone's top five list and, Counting you for commission right. like how many for your commission slots how many entries did you get um this past time i think i had about 25 people 25 30 people i remember when i did la remember i did it last year and I, uh -huh. I had minis in there too so there there was a lot more people because um i think that you know the minis are smaller more affordable and everything oh mm -hmm. sure um I want to say I was pushing like 50, 45 wow. last year. Um, but yeah, i am still, I mean, you can ask my husband like once a month, I'm just still like in awe and I'm, I, I don't know. I'm just so grateful that I get to stay home with my son and me for a living. Um, it's, I mean, I'm just speechless. I, that, that many people like my work. I'm um, just really appreciative. Everybody that supports me um because i wouldn't be able to do it without you guys my customers <laughs> <laughs> there's mine right there yeah <laughs> um how do you balance that though being full-time with with baby baby and uh, i mean i'm sure jimmy's home right now because the yes. epidemic is that correct <laughs> yeah so he um 
I have help from family, you know, watching Wyatt throughout the week. So that'll give me a couple extra hours. But I mean, mainly right now, he naps once a day and I get at least two hours or so, sometimes pushing three hours a day just to sit down and get some work done. Um, I really have to learn how to manage my time right. Um, you know, I have to sit down and, and think, what can I do? I don't know, what's my most efficient time use right now? So I'll prep something and I know it's got to dry for at least a day. So I'll get those things done first. That way tomorrow I can work on that. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of a learning curve because most of my day is spent with Wyatt for sure which I know I'm, I'm enjoying it now because eventually he probably will go to daycare and, and preschool and everything like that and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have my time back eventually but um yeah so I just work when he sleeps basically after he goes to bed and nap times <laughs> I remember so some, some I remember somebody telling me that at one point they were on a, a, a Zoom call with you and some other artists and you were literally working with a baby on your hip. And I was like, someone saint that woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's been, I mean, I love chatting with other artists. Um, that was probably, that was probably Heather. Uh, Amanda and Kylie and Shane and I chat quite a bit too, which is just nice. Sure. To, 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 especially now because we're all, still trying to stay home and you know, mm. not be out and about. So it's nice to see some other human faces. And <laughs> I don't know about mine, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, just being able to bounce ideas off of other artists is really nice. Not, um, uh, not to circle back, but do you batch your colors? Do you, when you do? Normally I don't, but yeah, I do have two Gruyas that I'm working on right now. <laughs> <laughs> but lately my... I don't know if I want to call it my attention span, but lately I've just been working on one horse at a time just to make sure, you know, it's as perfect as it can be and I don't miss anything. Because um, I guess with pastels, as you go, I'm fixing little mistakes or, you know, smoothing it up here or there. So it's just stuff like that I don't want to miss that, mm -hmm. you know, you might get it in your hands and be like, oh, it's a flaw, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I try to make it as best as I possibly can. So lately, I've only been doing one horse at a time. So this is kind of unusual. I've got two going at one time. But... Two nice ones, too. Yeah. <laughs> Stormwatch is one of my favorites. He must be fun for an artist. He's really, he's, he's, yeah. a, he's a quirky sculpture. Oh, yeah. He's just. Yeah, show and tell, great. show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very, 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 very early on for my career, but um, he's probably going to be, I got to warm him up a little bit. He's a little cool right now. He's looking very blue on the screen, but um, he's going to be, I think it's Hobiano. Hmm. All done. So got to finish up his pastel work and then I can switch to do my white markings. And sometimes I'll go back to pastels if I feel like, because sometimes when she gets, the main tail color on or the white markings on then you look at your body color and it needs to yeah. So yeah it really is just a lot of back and forth so what else can you show us Does, can we see the levi see, gonna be, he's probably going to be more of a cooler bruya um again this is probably saying at like six or seven layers right now and he's got at least that many more to go um, and then he'll probably be a minimal splash. Like nice. Mm. Are these commissions or are these sales pieces? These two are um, sales pieces. Ruh so, row. Really <laughs> 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 RCA dog. Probably be for Briarfest. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So you're doing Artisan's Gallery then? Yes. Similar, similar last year, I'll have at least one piece. Um, like I said, probably one of those to offer. And then everything else is going to be mini medallions, micro minis, all first come first serve. Wild. Are you doing a, do you have a time that you're doing? I uh, have, have not settled on that yet, but probably okay. Thursday evening. I think it, I think Let us know. We're going to do a calendar for everybody, for the artists, so right. that everybody can block out when they're, yeah. when they're doing their time. So they, people can just go to the webpage and go, okay. Yes. People can yeah. know how, how many hours they need to be awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, last year, I just did the opening, you know, time Thursday evening. Right. It normally would be. Um, mm -hmm. And that seemed to work out well. Nice. I can't wait until we can all be in person again. It's just. I know. Oh, I know. It's. Ugh. There's nothing. It's a like whole year. Like it really hit home with with Briar boot camp this year, which was Briar West. Right. Yeah. And that's like the last thing I did in person with everybody last year. Right. Yeah, I can't believe it's March already. It's a crazy <laughs> year. So, have you seen that meme that's like Captain from Captain America where Captain America's lapping the, yes. yeah. <laughs> the the Falcon and he's like, you know, I you know, trying trying to get over last March and here comes this March. <laughs> exactly. I'm still, yeah. <laughs> I'm still in last year. <laughs> but yeah, just I don't know. I'm excited to get back and see everybody because there's nothing like, you know, handing something over to someone that you've worked on for so long. That's, you know, yeah. Nice feeling and getting able, you know, being able to see all your friends and the horses. And that's what I miss. I miss my friends. Yeah. yeah. So like Zoom is great. I'm glad we have it. It's like mm -hmm. it they got developed just in a nick of time, but yep. but it's not the same, you know. Nope. Nope. It'll be it'll be that much better when we do get to see each other. Yeah, excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you talk about some of your favorite stuff that you've done? Like pieces that you really stand out to you as some of your favorites? I would have to say Barnaby, you know, my my little draft sculpture. Mm -hmm. uh, just so cute. He was my first resin production piece. Um, you know, I had tried sculpting many times before that and it just never, <laughs> you know, just never came together or panned out. Um, so to be able to finish him and be super happy with them and have him into production and be able to paint multiples and see other people paint your sculpture is like the greatest feeling. I was going to ask, how is that? How is it, you know, as a painter, it is so, that's how you started out. Yes. Um, and, you know, my other part that I was going to say that um, are my favorites are my medallions. It's the same thing. It's just being able to, like jo Georgia is another mm -hmm. painter that maybe I, for I forgot to mention earlier. There's my um, medallion by Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, yellow. I haven't gotten it painted because like yellow is like my favorite for medallions. Yeah. So. Well, that's yeah, I do like doing the colored resin because then you don't feel like so pressured. I don't know, to get it painted and it's still pretty on the shelf. Um, but yeah, just it's so exciting to see other people paint your sculpture so I can, you know, get a little taste of what all these other sculptors feel like and how exciting it is to see, you know, your sculpture pop up somewhere with somebody else's amazing paintwork on it. Um, because everything looks different in everybody else's styles and mm -hmm. gives it yeah. a different feel. So I really love that. Um, let's see. I have a favorite or favorite painted pieces. Um, the Lucius that I did recently was, I don't know. Mom, yeah. Yeah. Was, I'm uh, going to go to, I'm going to go to Scotland and deal with Sophie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want to say that on the podcast, Heather. <laughs> Yeah. She has an amazing collection. I'm actually really glad she, glad she got that piece. It's yeah. so phenomenal. Yeah, I love her collection. I love her. She's she's phenomenal. She's so she's so kind. Um, but yeah, he comes to mind just because I've been wanting a Lucius for a long time, and I finally got one, and that's the color I knew he wanted to be. So just you know, some pieces are aren't so definitive. Or I'm just kind of like, eh, I'll just start painting and see where this goes. Him, it was like he needs to be. <laughs> he told you what he wanted yeah and, um, so i noticed after you did him you were like hey anybody got another one <laughs> <laughs> another one yeah have not had any luck there yet but i'm sure one will turn up i love amelia's new sculpture so, yeah. so much yeah, i love her feet she has the best feet <laughs> yeah, there's, and she works i think all in epoxy which is crazy that blows my mind sarah does too and yeah. i don't know how they do it yeah it, it seems it seems very um inflexible but you know sarah came up like that customizing and i think it just that's what works for her mm -hmm. yeah once you're used to certain material it's and that's what you can get the best results with but yeah to yeah. something and be 
essentially to our time frame that you have to you know before it starts getting too hard yeah and yeah and then you gotta dremel it all off if you don't like it <laughs> yeah yeah no, i mean it's, it's a lot um so what do i want to ask um I want to ask about the future, but I also want to ask like near term, long term future. Yeah. Like, what can we look forward to from you from like Briar Fest and sale soon and blah blah blah? I know you showed us some of that, but what are your what are your long as well as that as your long term goals? Where do you want to go with your um, your artistic career? Do you have like wider ranging plans? Hmm. I haven't thought I haven't thought as far as like a couple years ahead. Um, I mean, I'm hoping to still be doing what I love to do now. Um, but I keep seeing Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Jimmy. Hi, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> um, oh, she he's got baby. Hi. <laughs> he's waving. That's yeah. awesome. Um. But yeah, I hope to still be, I don't know, perfecting my craft and, you know, continuously trying to do new things and get better. I would like to sculpt more. Um, I did forget, I do have a rearing pony, a rearing Shetland pony that I'm working on. Can we see? Um, and I just did the, had no ears, no legs, no mane or tail. <laughs> it's just a body. Yes. Oh, oh body. look at the pot belly. Um, so yeah, the, the legs are all whittled down right now so I can keep working on them. But I just made his waist casting so I could keep going. Nice. So that was another learning process. I'm just trying to get more familiar. So yeah, so what's that about? I, I You're not going straight through with it? You waist cast the partial sculpture? Yes, um, I had him on an armature and I did the initial sculpturing, sculpturing, sculpting, excuse me, with, um, with I'm thinking of Sculpey is the, the clay. Uh, Sculpey medium is what I started him in and I just didn't get him in the right place so his rod was in the way and that step is a little too soft um, to do legs and thin pieces mm, of yeah. him with so I just decided to do a waist casting um, because I do like working with the reds a little bit better and then from this point on I can use my two-part epoxy in um, hopefully finish him up pretty soon. He does have, you know, his, his coat texture and everything on. Oh, wow. So it's really just, I need to finish his legs and he needs his ears and hair. <laughs> um, and if I can help it, I'm going to try to figure out a way to maybe get him to stand by himself. So we'll see how that goes, but he yeah. made it. If you do, do he, if he's got two feet down in his tail. Yeah. If I can maybe put a weight in the tail or something just to help keep him up um that would be nice because i do i do like baseless horses for the most part even though bases can be a lot of fun too sometimes um so i'm hoping some point this year he'll be i don't know feasible and out and painted by you i was gonna ask do you think you'll have him ready for bar fest i'm hoping so yeah uh, yeah maybe <laughs> Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out if, if I have enough ability to cast him by myself. But right. We'll, we'll see. If not, Jen Ulf is, is and her husband are fantastic. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, they are they are they great. Are burning it up. Yes. Um, and that's a whole like that's a whole other art in and of itself. Yeah. So um that's more practice with casting, more practice with sculpting for me. Um, in years down the road, uh, just to help me, I don't know, grow my art in that way, because it is a really nice feeling to sculpt, sculpt the horse and paint it. And, you know, you've created the embodiment of the horse in all of your own work. You know, I love painting sculptures by other people because it's just, I mean, they amaze me just sitting here looking at them unpainted. Um, that's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and as you can see, like, that is my collection. I love things. And it's just fun to have them unpainted. It's, you know, I don't collect a lot of um, OFs or a lot of painted pieces, but I do love them. What's your, is the top part, the painted ones, the actual, your actual collection? That's, uh, these up here are 
um, mostly sold. Let me see if I can get this here. But oh, those wow. are pieces that I have finished. Ah, uh, gotcha. I'm, I'm trying to get my computer here to work. <laughs> Not very well, but. Oh, that so, dapple yeah. gray troubadour. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're all beautiful, but that dapple gray troubadour, good Lord. Yeah, so this is, this is <clears throat> things for Briarfest will hang out with me. Oh, um, nice. Mm. So yeah, those are finished pieces on the top too. And then these are all of my. Look at all the ponies. I know. <laughs> done at some point. Um, but yeah, it's just, I guess if, if I had to say I collected anything, that is my collection. <laughs> it's not a bad thing to collect. So is, is your studio in front of you, like your work area, or is that over to the side? Can you show I'm, us that? Is that I'm possible? At, I'm at my desk right here. Um, sorry, it's going to be a little wobbly. No worries. Here, but uh, so yeah, I just have an L-shaped desk. Um, I think I showed you my acrylics earlier. Mm -hmm. so this is kind of where I do my acrylic work. I try to keep it as far away as I can for my pastels. Yeah. And um, my husband actually built me this dra down draft table. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. So it really helps cut down on the dust because it's not good to be breathing that in. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, I'm really glad to see people, especially at Namo Pamo, talking about protection. Um, so this dust mask is really nice and light. Raven um, got me onto that. And then I wear, you know, a respirator full on for sealers and primers. Um, and I can't recall what the cartridges are called carbon yeah they have a carbon filter in them but yeah you really don't want to be breathing in vapors um so that's in the garage so when i go in there i have a totally different mask for that so but every time you seal you put on your big fighter pilot mask Good. And seal. that's what you should be doing <laughs> i have that and then and of course J jimmy helps me with so much um he built me a spray booth in my garage as well so that does help pull out most of the vapor, but still I wear my mask just to be. Right, yeah. right. It's only smart. Yeah. Um, so this is where I pastel everything and that helps catch my dust. And- That is um, so cool. Jimmy's a, Jimmy's a treasure. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't be able to do a lot. Do you wear gloves? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Gloves, um, especially for sealing and priming. And you really don't want the oils from your fingers. Otherwise, you're going to end up with fingerprints on your pastel dust. Mm -hmm. Once you start pasteling, then you're going to mm -hmm. see fingerprints start to show up. It's another thing I learned. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, when I was handling him, I was just touching his, his leg. Right. Because I don't want to touch any of this that I'm planning on continuing to pastel. Um, I just have a little organizer here for my pan pastels and my soft pastels. And all my brushes are there at the bottom. Obviously, separate brushes for pastels and acrylics um yeah that's about it hmm. do you work very clean like your studio looks very well organized and clean or did you clean up for us oh no i, I <laughs> um i don't know kylie calls me a neat freak and clean <laughs> kylie calls you a neat freak yeah oh but, wow she, she keeps her stuff pretty yeah, clean. Say, she seems like she's pretty neat freak years i feel off. like i feel like kylie's kind of a, a crossover i think she destroys everything and then cl can't stand that, it and cleans yeah. it up again yeah that that happens but i don't think she's either she's a clean as i go person either right i think it all just like kind of melanie miller is who's a whole oh, level yeah, yeah. of organization and cleanliness and i think awesome. melanie would go insane without that <laughs> yeah i love seeing her studio pictures it's just I love it when she does a reorg and then she labels everything meticulously like that, that like makes my little OCD go, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> With their little label maker. I need <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's just a little workspace for me and that gets the job done. I need it light. Looks, um, Jimmy the light looks great in there. Yeah. Jimmy installed the can lights. Jimmy helps me with all that stuff. <laughs> We're going to give Jimmy a gold star. Yeah, seriously. Oh, yeah. Um, trying to think. And then I, for pictures, I really don't have an elaborate setup. I just have a table on the wall over there. Okay. I, I'll throw my backdrop up. And I have a couple, you know, lights that I got off of Amazon that I can set up. But do you use ring lights or do you use the big the covered up ones? 
the I'll grab one. It's crash. <laughs> it's just, oh, like, gotcha. I think it's the same ones. Um, I don't know. Kylie said something about a couple of years ago, and they mm -hmm. just, you can do different levels. But yeah, I can clamp them to wherever I want. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, um, learn something new every day. But yeah, that's another thing. Photography, I would like to get better at, um, and learn more about camera settings and that kind of thing. I just mm -hmm. kind of turn them on and I go. <laughs> Are you using a DLSR or a cell phone? I think it's a. See, I don't know any of these. Uh, like a thirty. <laughs> is it a camera or is it a phone? Oh no, it's a camera. Okay. Okay. It's just a. I think it's a. <clears throat> Is it a Canon or Nikon? It's a Canon. Just, oh yeah, yeah that's, that's my camera. I have that camera. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just go with the auto setting and I just- Nice. Take pictures. <laughs> nice. But yeah, that would be something else I would like to, I mean, once I have some more time on my hands, learn more about. Nice. Yeah. So we talked about earlier about uh, your advice to paint every day when you're a new artist. Um, do you have any other like kind of epiphanies you had along your journey th that you want to share, like, you know, or how you, how you keep innovating now that you're where you probably want to be for the most part? Yeah, it's just trying I mean, sometimes it's hard because you can kind of get stuck in a rut of what you're comfortable with. Like if you have a certain way that you like to paint a particular color, you know, formula, let's say, um, maybe just taking the time to jump outside of those lines there and maybe, you know, you might end up with something that's um, better or richer. So it's just, I don't know, always trying something new. Um, I think is the most important thing and just practicing. I mean, practice, practice, practice. I mean, this is going, I'm going on like 15 years here of painting and, you know, I still am trying to improve my work. Um, so it's just practice and it takes a lot of time and really, I mean, I'm always open if anybody wants to ask me questions, my studio page, they can always message me. Um, I know I get a lot of messages and I always try to answer everybody's questions and, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it really just boils down to it. And I, I think we always talk about, you know, somebody so talented, um, which is a little bit of it, but it is just a lot of practice. It's not going to be an overnight thing. Um, but I think that's just the important thing to do is. Practice, practice, practice. practice <laughs> um, how did how do you how did you deal with obstacles when you hit a wall with something and you couldn't figure it out? You hit a hit a problem you couldn't fix. You hit a technique you couldn't nail. Is that your community that steps in and helps you, or how did you overcome those? Yes, those early years, um, it was a lot of you know getting getting online and reading how other you know it was very helpful when other people would post tutorials, which mm -hmm. um, I have done a few in the past just because I'm hoping to help other people. They can see, I think I did one for Imagine Equine, um, just being able to see the process from start to finish. But if you hit a roadblock, at least with pastels, I could always, you can always lighten things back up. Um, and then if that didn't work, I know it hurts to do it, but you can strip everything off and you can start over. Um, like I dabbled with oils for the first time a couple of years ago on a Levi, I remember, and my oils <laughs> didn't dry and I just couldn't, like I couldn't get my oils to dry. It was black, which I think is a color that's hard. Yeah, that one black takes, takes a lot of time and a lot of dryer. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't do something right. And I remember he was like my last, like I'd kind of gotten pretty far with him. So, it, you know, it was hard to strip him, but we take it all off, and then he ended up being that dapple buckskin. Screw it. <laughs> if you can like don't give up right away, and if you can fix it with you know more paint, then I mean that's always the best thing to do. Just to try to keep pushing with your vision of what you want them to look like. But it doesn't hurt to just start over. 
Um, it's a little bit of extra work and a little bit of extra prepping, but you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to be unhappy with your piece. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, if you can fix it and save yourself the work, I think Stephanie just did a thing on that in Nemo Paymo, mm -hmm. if I remember. But, yeah, she was the one that was like, just, just keep going, especially if you're new, yeah. just keep going. Because, you learn, yeah. you learn more from failure. Yeah, exactly. And when you're in the middle, like when I'm ever, whenever I'm painting a bay horse, like you get halfway through those pastel layers and you're like, God, this looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just have to keep going. And, um, you know, sometimes you kind of get yourself with your layers to, a somewhat of a finished looking product and then you kind of jump backwards and start filling in some areas and brightening some parts or um, just to help it look a little bit more like a horse. Like I think Stephanie goes ahead and she paints her eyeballs on her horse just to make her feel like it has a, just so it has a personality. Um, so sometimes just getting everything blocked in in general will help you and you're not staring at like a super ago, mm -hmm. like his legs are done and that'll sometimes help you and inspire you to keep pushing on and keep going, mm -hmm. make it look a little bit horse-like and then everything will be okay. I would, I, that actually surprising is great advice because when I started doing a little bit of detail on mine's face, that really helped push me forward because yes. I feel like the horse's face and eyes are the make and break of the entire piece, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I've seen beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paint jobs. And then I look at the face and there are frog eyes in it. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, uh, I think for many years with AJ, I had a problem with their glazing because their eyes weren't there yet. And it just took the whole piece down a notch. So I think it helps if you can get something livable on the face to move you forward with everything else. Exactly. And two, like if, um, which I may do this on this guy because he may have half and half white in coloring. Um, even at this point, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and block in his white markings. And then all of your focus with your pastels is gonna be on the colored areas. Right. So, that could also help you um, if there are problem areas that need fixing or something. If there's going to be a white marking there anyway, just, you know, you can go ahead and put it on and continue working with, you know, your pastels or your oils, but you're only focusing on the areas that are going to show in the end anyway. Um, so that's helped me with a couple pieces too, especially if it's, if it's a color that proves difficult for me or requires a lot of layers, that kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So I guess uh, we're going to wind down. So whatever, um, do you have any other thoughts or any other words of encouragement or any, you know, thoughts on the hobby that you want to leave us with? I think just what got me into it years ago is I, the art aspect of customizing model horses is just so broad. Um, it's amazing and just so inspiring to see everybody else, you know, jumping on Namo Pamo. If you can participate in that, it's just a nice group community just to help you keep going. Um, trying to think if there's, there's a lot of customizing forums, mm -hmm. not forums, mm -hmm. but <laughs> groups, <laughs> on Facebook, um, Instagram. And like I said, don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. That's how you learn how to do these things. Just like I learned from other people. Um, you know, you don't have to have formal training or anything to, to get better and practice and be a good artist. But um, out of curiosity, what did you go to school for? I, my degree is in business. <laughs> <Probably helps. laughs> I worked in commercial real estate for a couple of years before I went full time. Wow. So that was, yeah, total opposite end of the So wow. like no, zero, not graphic art, nothing, like. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> let that be a lesson to you all yeah. right so, yep and just this is just what I love doing and this is what I would come home to after work and I would paint my model horses after work you know just it's always been something that I've really enjoyed right. doing so I would be able to do it full time you know, as my job now it's just like this is this is, this is my dream 
Yeah, and I think I think that's interesting because Kylie on her meet and greet this weekend said that she did go to art school. She is classically trained and they tried to push her into stuff that she didn't want to do. Yeah. So she, I mean, she kind of did the same thing. She turned her back on the real art world and went and did what she wanted, which was the same thing you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's just whatever you have a passion for. Um, and I think that just, I mean, it, it's my it's my job, it's my work, but I don't, I don't feel like it's that way, which is really nice. That's amazing. Mm, yeah. That is great. I mean, probably, um, you know, if you love what you're doing, it, it just gives you, pushes you to try that much harder. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just always trying to improve, but no, yeah, just practice, 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 practice for, for anybody that's wanting to try it. Um, I mean, you can't, can't get anywhere if you don't try it first. But yeah, if reaching out, um, I'm always available for questions if anybody has any. If you have help with pastels, especially, it's where I'm knowledgeable at. Girl, I'm going to be emailing you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. okay. Show me how to do this. Feel like, you know, <laughs> well, Stephanie's been a great coach, but I want to, I want to like bug other people that maybe have different techniques too. So yeah, every, everybody has because the, the flawlessness of your finish, just I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I still don't believe that. Amanda, pa Amanda pastels too, right? Yes, she does. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, I can't get, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Amanda's work is absolutely. Amazing. I mean, we're talking about Amanda Brock. Yeah. I figured. Amanda, um, well, I was telling our audience. She, <laughs> she years ago was like, Hey, you know, I, I had never talked to her before and she she's the one who got me to you know start going to shows and getting a little bit more involved so i've heard a thing for that um that was when she, she used to live back in florida <laughs> i know she moved to north carolina and left you i know i love north carolina that's gorgeous yeah her tiny house is so cute <laughs> i know i get a kick out of her cats too oh yeah i do too <laughs> i can't believe she named a cat paul <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good name for a I just, cat. It just cracks me up that she named a cat Paul. <laughs> All right. Um, plug your work, Nikki. Tell us uh, where you are, where people can see your work, how they can reach out to you. You've touched on it a couple of places, but we mm -hmm. have to give you the, the platform at the end. So my website is, um, and it's always been a weird domain for me, but my dad set it up for me years ago. So I've just always kept it that way. Um, it's paintedmodelhorses.com is my website. And I do have a mailing list on there that I usually, um, if I have commission slot openings or if I'm selling a piece, that's where I will blast out an email. Um, and there's a contact form there too that you can contact me at. I'm on Facebook is Realistic Equine Art by Nikki Button. And my Instagram is Equine Art by Nikki Button because my first Instagram account got hats. <gasps> So I had to create a new one. So that's why it's Lamola. Yeah. No, no big deal. But equine art at equine art by Nikki Button is my Instagram. Okay. Perfect. And Excellent. people can see your work. Their, your next big sales event is going to be Briarfest. Briarfest is going to be my next sale event that will have, um, you know, first come, first serve type minis and micros. And the Good dad. Lord. Melee. Yeah. Nuts. Melee so much fun do you have <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity do you have stickers have you done stickers i can't remember I have used vistaprint you know i'll make stickers of my photographs but those have always been like freebies i'll send them out with with boxes but i have never um you know drawn any art or any stickers i need to get a uh iPad for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sticker guru. I know. I have. Oh, I have a whole pile of like other hobby stickers in my drawer. Oh, me too. I have it. I put them out for uh, just a picture and th threw them all over my coffee table. And everybody's like, "You got a lot of stickers." And I was like, "You think?" <laughs> Mine are on my tack trucks. <laughs> I love stickers. <laughs> They're cool. All right, Nikki, we will let you get back to your regular life. We, uh, we, we know you're busy, so we appreciate you joining us and taking time out from uh, your duties as mom. No, thank you for having me. This was fun. I would enjoy talking to you guys. Yes, it was really informative. I think people are really going to enjoy it. So thank you so much. Yes, thanks there, for joining there's us. There's probably something that I missed, so if anybody has questions, we can always ask. Yep. 
Yeah.